So here and there, I have been vocal about the fact that I am a general fan of the Total Drama series. I have a couple of video ideas for the canon series, but recently I've decided to check out a popular fan-made AU series on YouTube, that being Disventure Camp by Odd Nation Cartoons. And I gotta say, it honestly holds up well with the canon series in my opinion. It's got a great variety of characters, both good and bad. And even with the lesser qualities, that still offers up for some great discussions. That's another thing that I like about Total Drama as a franchise or TV show format. It's that even with the qualities that I don't love as much as others, they can still give me a lot to talk about. And like most things that involve opinions, good and bad is really subjective in the end. And I find myself feeling that way with one specific character in the first season of Disventure Camp. As you can probably tell from the title and thumbnail, that character is Jake. Now, if it were just my input on the series, then I don't know if I would really have that strong of an opinion on Jake. But oh my dog, the fandom certainly does have a strong opinion, and from what I've seen, it's mostly negative. To the point where I constantly feel the need to defend Jake, because honestly, I really don't think he's as bad as some people make him out to be. So that's why we're here today, everyone. You guys really like my last inoffensive video, and who knows, maybe after this video, I might make this a new main thing on my channel. Now with all that out of the way, let's get into this. For those of you who aren't familiar with this venture camp, it's very similar to its inspirations format. You got a select cast of characters competing in an elimination type of reality show like Survivor, all for the big cash prize. And I gotta say, this season's cast is pretty good. There are a lot of characters that I love, and even some new character ideas that haven't been explored upon in this canon total drama series now that there's no age limit or restriction. Fiore especially is a fun new character concept in a series like this, and I'd say the guys over at Odd Nation Cartoons executed this idea really well. But this video isn't about Fiore. Back to the character of Focus, Jake. Odd Nation Cartoons has really set the ball rolling for LGBTQ rap and total drama. Since the canon series aired back in the late 2000s and early 2010s, there hasn't been much LGBTQ representation. There are some hints at it here and there, but it's mostly written off as jokes. My guess is because there was still some stigma around centering LGBTQ themes in cartoons that the writers of Total Drama couldn't really get much past the screens. And we do know now, thanks to the 2023 TDI reboot, that the writers aren't against LGBTQ plotlines, and they actually know how to write good LGBTQ rep without coming off as stereotypical. But due to the time of the original series, it seems that they couldn't have much shown on screen aside from a few hints. But thanks to Odd Nation cartoons, we have what the Total Drama fans consider the first LGBTQ characters and couples in Aiden and James, Gabby and Ellie, and also Tom and Jake. Man, take a shot every time I just said LGBTQ in that segment. <laughs> Don't actually use alcoholic drinks if you're not of legal age, though. I know most of you are probably under the legal age, so just use soda or something, I don't know. But anyway, Tom and Jake have some chemistry and start to bond in the first few episodes. It's here that Jake also reveals some of his more personal life to Tom and the audience. We learn that Jake's grandma is in poor health, and it's especially hitting Jake hard. She's often cranky, but she was the only one who really understood me. This implies that Jake might come off in a different way to most people than someone who really takes the time to understand him. May or may not be significant to how he comes off to certain people later on, but really, I just use this as my reasoning for headcanoning him as autistic, okay? I have a ton of autistic headcanons. I've been since I found out I'm also on the spectrum, okay? Let me have my comfort, damn it! Tom reassures Jake that he can talk to him if he feels upset about anything, further growing the bond between the two of them. In episode 3, we actually learn a lot about all of the characters since the challenge tailors to their worst fears. Fear of going bald. There is someone inside waiting to cut all your hair. What? Some play it off for more comedic effect than others. But when we get to Jake's fear, it turns out to be a fear of cemeteries. As the teal team is waiting to advance because of Jake's refusal to face his fear-related challenge, causing the team a 30-minute penalty, Tom goes to comfort Jake and asks him if he's okay. We then learn that this fear is more stemmed from anxiety due to past situations of Jake's grandfather passing away when he was a child and his mom bringing him to his grandfather's grave to give flowers every so often. I gotta say, Jake's mom, maybe bringing a young child to a place that causes them a lot of anxiety and bad thoughts and not giving them a choice in the matter isn't really great for their mental health. I understand if you're grieving, but maybe don't make your kid do something they're not comfortable with. Just a thought. 
Now, I know this is just really an interpretation of Jake's character and speculation on my end, but it would offer up for some motives and extra insight for Jake's character. But either way, we now know that Jake has anxiety around death and possibly loss in general from being forced to go to cemeteries growing up, and his grandma being in poor health also feeds this anxiety. I don't know about you guys, but from what I know from personal experience and from what I've generally seen, if someone has anxiety from one aspect of their life, there is a good chance that these feelings of anxiety can bleed into other aspects of your life. Episode 5 is also important for Jake's character, but there's not really much conflict here to possibly defend or material to explain his motives, so I'm just going to give a brief summary of what happens. Basically, the Teal team is rewarded with a phone call home after winning the previous challenge. And believe it or not, Jake won said challenge for his team by breaking the tie. Can we just appreciate that from him? Also for kicking Nick in the sensitive area after Nick was being so annoying in that episode. But anyway, the Teal team each makes their calls home, and Jake calls his brother, and he unfortunately gets the news that his grandma passed away. He's of course heartbroken by this news, and Tom does look out for him in this episode, but this episode mostly shows Jake forming a bond with Miriam. It's really sweet on both Jake and Miriam's end, with Miriam also being able to open up to other people despite her grieving her husband and son. It's just a really sweet bond, what else can I say? This leads us into episode 6, where Jake and Tom have their first bump in the road. Miriam notices that Jake might be having feelings for Tom, and she playfully teases him about it. You know, like people do for some reason. Jake confides in her that he does have feelings for Tom, but he doesn't think he's ready for another relationship. Why? Recently, I was in a somewhat toxic relationship, and things didn't end well. What did he do? He cheated on me, and I couldn't get over it. So it turns out that Jake was in a toxic relationship before, which ended in him being cheated on. Now this right here, I feel explains a lot about Jake's motives and behavior in the following events, so let's stick a giant pin in this. Now in the previous episodes, Gret found out that Tom was a spy and that he's in the game for work purposes. During the challenge, she relays all of this to Jake and Miriam, but Jake doesn't believe her at first. Now keep that fact in mind, because we will come back to it. Tom returns from Gabby trying to distract him, and Jake jokingly tells Tom about the supposedly ludicrous things that Gret just said about him, only to realize that these things were true and that Tom really was keeping up a persona during the competition. And Jake is immediately upset, and wonders if his bond with Tom has all been a lie too. After all, if he's hiding this, then what else could he be hiding? Personally, I say he has every right to be upset here. But unfortunately, Jensen secretly posted the footage of this online and it went viral, costing Tom his job. And this is where I feel that the Jake hate pretty much starts. I've seen people saying that Jake ruined Tom's career. But, uh, how exactly? Just because he was upset that Tom was lying to him about certain things and not knowing if he was possibly lying about anything else, including if he was just using Jake? To bring back up Jake's previous relationship, it was apparently pretty toxic and ended with Jake being cheated on. So the infidelity obviously comes with some lying and trust problems. So what a surprise that Jake has trust issues! And how is Jake supposed to know that this would put Tom's career in jeopardy? Honestly, this was a really risky mission for Tom either way because if he somehow got caught on air and it went out to the world on live TV, then he would have been exposed either way, whether this footage was put on social media or not. So this particular instance, I don't really blame anyone, including Jake, because it really just seems like a crappy set of circumstances. And now the giant dumpster fire that is episodes 10 and 11. Here we go, folks because what happened in episodes 6 through 8 was just the tip of the iceberg. Now we get into the giant mess that is the train of hate that Jake gets run over by. So in episode 10, Alec and Fiore talk to Ellie and try and strategize with her. Alec mentions the fact that Ellie might soon be outnumbered by Jake, Miriam, and Tom, especially if something happens to Fiore or Alec. And so they conspire to manipulate Jake by lying about Tom to split Jake and Tom up. And so Ellie lies to Jake about Tom, saying that she overheard him talking to a non-existent boyfriend and talking crap about Jake. And Jake believes Ellie's lie and mistrusts Tom. 
thus causing Tom to be voted out. But Fiore throws Ellie under the bus and reveals that Ellie was lying to Jake this whole time. And in the next episode, he's, in my opinion at least, rightfully pissed at her. And here we go, everyone. The amount of hate that I've been seeing Jake get for this is absolutely insane. People have said so many things about Jake being an idiot and blaming him for believing the lies and how he should have known better and how he should have talked to Tom. Like he didn't consider that? I, I should confront Tom. No. Okay, let's look back at what was previously established about Jake. We know that Jake has anxiety about certain things and this anxiety may or may not bleed into other aspects of his life. We also know that Jake was in a toxic relationship previously that ended with him being cheated on. And in another line in episode 10, I have reason to assume that Jake's previous relationship might have also been a bit controlling. So he's been making me make these promises so he could keep me under control? So with all of that in mind, is it really a shocker that Jake believed the lie? After all, Tom wasn't completely honest with Jake either. Because again, if he was hiding some things before, what else could he have been hiding? And also the part about Jake having anxiety and trauma regarding infidelity, that makes it even more believable that he would have his guard up regarding new relationships. Speaking at least from my own experiences with anxiety and certain traumas, I would rather have my guard up and have nothing happen to me than let my guard down only to be emotionally hurt again. We could assume the same for Jake because all the hints were there. Of course Jake isn't going to think the clearest in a situation that brings him back to traumatic moments mentally. And again, some people make it sound like Jake believed Ellie on a whim and that he had no doubts about it when it's quite frankly the opposite. I, I should confront Tom. No. But last time, I promised if we had problems, we would talk things through. Something's not right. Tom would never do this to me. Fine, I guess I should give you a chance to explain yourself. These moments, right here show that Jake was willing to trust Tom and give him the benefit of the doubt, but Ellie kept playing up her lie and thus Jake began to doubt himself even more. Oh yeah, and how are you supposed to know better as you are actively being gaslit? Now, as bad as what Ellie did is and how upset I may seem with her, I don't think she's entirely a bad person either. Alexa underscore Disventure Camp made a really good video defending Ellie, and that was actually somewhat the inspiration for this video, along with the fact that I just felt the need to defend this guy. But to bring up some points in that video, yes, it is understandable for Ellie to ultimately put the million dollar prize as first priority, given that this money can change her life for all the better. And yes, she might not have known about the trauma that Jake experienced. That is all understandable. However, that does not diminish what she did and the impact that it had on Jake. She did lie to Jake, and she did toy with his trust, traumas, anxieties, and emotions. Who wouldn't be upset if they found out that that was happening to them? I know I would be so hurt and maybe even develop a new trauma from it depending on the circumstances. Heck, Jake very much could have developed more trust issues because of this, given how he's dealt with feeling like he can't trust people multiple times in the past. Now, I know that there is a line between certain mental health problems explaining certain behaviors and justifying them. However, I feel like in order for that train of thought to be applied, someone had to have done something inherently wrong. What did Jake do wrong? Honestly, I don't think that much. The worst thing was probably accuse Tom of things he never did, which could hurt, but again, Tom hasn't exactly been honest Abe, has he? Now, Tom does bring up this point. Why did Jake trust Ellie over him? Well, Tom, given that you were an exactly honest Abe, and the fact that he's also been lied to, betrayed, and cheated on by a previous partner, it makes sense that he would really trust a partner over a friend. And even then, again, it's not like Jake blindly believed Ellie with no doubts. It's just that Ellie squashed those thoughts and made him further question his trust and relationships before he could talk to Tom. 
And again, Ellie's motives are understandable, but there's no denying the damage that she's done to Jake's psyche, whether she knowingly did it or not. And that low blow in episode 11, yeah, even Alexa, a major Ellie fan, couldn't defend you on that, Ellie. You done a real bad thing, Ellie. I hope that higher chance of the million dollars was worth further traumatizing a guy with pre-existing anxiety, trauma, and trust issues. And boo-hoo, aw, I got cheated on. Oh, you wanna play this game, Ellie? Okay. Aw, boo-hoo, I have to work two jobs. Aw, boo-hoo, I'm tight on money. Yeah, you can minimize someone's personal struggles all you want, but it will always have a big impact on them. After you voted out Gabby, I never pulled this on you, because I have some sense to not be a dick. Did Jake toy with your personal struggles to get Gabby out? No? Then bad analogy! You have no right to shame me. He does have a right to shame you when you were the one who hurt him! Ellie, are you remorseful for what you did to Jake or not? One minute you apologize and the next minute you double down. Which is it? And I can't even describe the amount of people who I've seen say things like, Lol, fuck Jake. He's an idiot. He deserved this. No. No, he didn't. No one deserves to have their weaknesses and mental health toyed with. And no one deserves to be manipulated. Jake has every single right to be upset with Ellie, and he does not have to forgive her if that's his choice. Again, I don't want to blame Ellie here because her circumstances are understandable in why she did what she did. But again, I also don't want to blame Jake. I believe that both of them were somewhat but also not in the wrong in this instance and I wish the fandom would stop vilifying one or the other. Especially a guy with major pre-existing anxiety, trauma, and trust issues that may or may not have just gotten a million times worse. Maybe if you weren't so annoying, your boyfriend wouldn't have cheated on you. What we are seeing now is a victim of immeasurable psychic damage. His facial expression is a telltale sign of irreversible harm done to billions of neurons and synapses. Poor guy might be dead. Now to wrap things up, let's talk about Tom and Jake as a potential item. I've seen a handful of people say that Tom and Jake shouldn't be a thing. And honestly, this particular argument, I can understand. Trust is an important factor to have in a relationship. And in that aspect, yes, I do agree that Jake isn't ready to start anything big with Tom. The note that Tom and Jake ended on at the end of the season was probably the best choice for both of them. Not starting anything major, but also staying on good terms and keeping the connection that they both benefit and find comfort from. And if things continue to improve for both of them, then maybe a relationship would be good for them. But for now, it's for the best that they take some time. I will agree that Jake isn't ready for a relationship and does have aspects of himself that he needs to work on. But I also refuse to see him as a bad person for having trauma responses and having mental health issues that need to be addressed. And that is why I'm defending him. Jake isn't perfect, but I definitely do not think that he's this awful person that the rest of the fandom makes him out to be. And there you have it. That is why I wholeheartedly defend Jake. I would say and why I will defend him until the day I die, but we also have a whole new season featuring Jake that may or may not have a lot of development for not just him, but Jake and Tom's relationship. That's right, with All-Stars coming up, we got a glimpse of what some of the dynamics are going to be like in the recently released trailer. And of course, people are also hating on Jake for this. Again, here I say he has a right to his feelings, given that the last time we saw him and Tom, they agreed to give each other space, but we're seemingly still on good terms and with things possibly looking up for them. And I know Aiden is taken by James, but again, the amount of anxiety and trauma and trust issues that Jake has, it's no surprise he might still be wary. Again, with having your guard up. And also, this is just a reminder that anxiety isn't always rational. I've had plenty of irrational thoughts from anxiety before. I really hope that Jake's mental health status gets touched upon in All-Stars, because that seems like the biggest obstacle that's standing between Jake's development and his relationship with Tom. I'm not going to judge Jake for his feelings. It's what he does with those feelings that matters to me, whether or not I will continue to defend him. 
But until then, we'll just have to wait and see, and I will continue to defend this young man with my life. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Whether or not you agree, I am always open to listening to and respecting your thoughts and opinions. I think that's all I want to say for now, everyone, and I'll see you guys around. Bye!